What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Great news, especially if you live in the L.A. area, California. October 18th, Gennady Triple G Golovkin versus Marco Antonio Rubio. Now, on the channel, I told you this fight was coming. It's been finalized. Dan Rayfield reports, among others. Um, this fight's going down at the StubHub Center. StubHub has been a great location that has given us good fights, and even the fight to beat, in my opinion, fight of the year, and that belongs to John Molina Jr., Lucas Matisse, action-packed, um, just a fun fight and an enjoyable card. So they're looking to add this. I think this is a good fight. And the thing that I hate about boxing is there's different levels of fans, and that's okay. I'm not expecting everyone to know their boxing history or whatever. But I'm sick of these shape-shifting motherfuckers who claim to be like die-hard fans. And you don't even know basics about boxing. So you're, you're basically perping, you're, you're perpetrating, and you're a poser. Now, the people that don't know Rubio are instantly going to be like, this is another bum, fuck that. But you're not giving the man his just due. Marco Antonio Rubio is a good fighter. And he also has near 80% for a KO percentage. So the motherfucker can crack. So, again, it's, it's just annoying. Some people... Um, they're fueled by just the big names in the sport. And I get it. We all want to see the big names, the Andre Ward versus Triple G. Him and his camp, Triple G, they heard Andre Ward's um, down to fight. They said that's not in their immediate plans to fight Andre Ward and move up in the division. They got work to do at 160. So it is what it is. If they don't want to fucking move up now, they're not going to. So look at 160. Who could they possibly fight? So keep in mind that excludes a lot of other guys like Carl Froch and whatnot if he's going to stay at 160. This is one of the best fights that is actually realistic and could be made. Now, again, if you don't know boxing, you don't know your shit, you'll be like, oh, Rubio's another bum. If you ask me, Triple G has been stepping up his competition. You know what I mean? He fought uh, Macklin. He fought Curtis Stevens. He fought Gill. And now he's fighting Marco Antonio Rubio. These guys are all good names and solid dudes in the sport of boxing. Before that, he had some undersized guys. Gabe Rosado never fought at 160. And he also fought a Sheeta, career 154-pounder, and Adamas and stuff like that. But I got to give props to Triple G for, one, being active. And, again, Marco Antonio Rubio is no pushover. He also recently teamed up with Robert Garcia, a great trainer. So we'll see what kind of game plan they come up with for Triple G. Now, in no way, shape, or form, let's get this out early. I would pick Triple G to win. I'm picking Triple G to win. I'm not doing the official breakdown prediction. But I understand what Marco Antonio Rubio brings to the table. And he's live dog. He's a live dog in there. You know what I'm saying? So this is a solid fight. And it's one of the best available fights that he can make. Some people are going to be like, oh, he should have fought Chavez Jr. Chavez Jr. has legal troubles, and we don't even know if Chavez Jr. can fucking make 160. So, unless Triple G's moving up to fight him, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Plus, Chavez Jr. has legal troubles with top rank. He's suing his promoter. Then you look at Peter Quillen. That's a good fight. Everyone wants to see that fight. However, Peter Quillen just signed a fight uh, against Matt Cor Korbova and against Matt Korobov. And that's with Rock Nation. So Peter Quillen can't fight Triple G. And even before that, Peter Quillen has had ample opportunity and time to face Triple G. And the fight hasn't been made anyway. So who's to say that fight would have happened? Now, another reason I like this fight is because it's a different type of fighter. Again, you got Marco Antonio Rubio, about an 80% KO percentage. He's tough. And he's a, he's a Mexican fighter that we know is going to at least go out on his shield. Now, I'm not saying all Mexican fighters do that, but this is one. He banged it out with Chavez Jr., and he made it to the last bell or whatnot. Chavez Jr., again, a big, much bigger than other people he was facing, plus Chavez Jr. at the time was undefeated, and he went the distance with him. Plus, Chavez Jr. was coming off of a, a KO win of Peter Manfredo Jr. when he fought Rubio. That was the fight right before Rubio. So, the dude's tough. He's tough as nails. He can hit. Um, he has tons of fights. He had to learn on the job. You know, kind of the Mexican upbringing uh, where fighters turn pro early or young or whatever. And they have to fight their way in the fight. And they take losses early sometimes. And then they get better. It's happened to 
plenty of people, Salido and, and other people. So um, it's just a good fight. Like I said, it's a solid fight. Peter Quillen, not available. And there is a the Cold War, so who knows if that fight would happen. Plus, you look at it, and Peter Quillen's my dude. I've interviewed him several times. He's my dude, but I'm an honest person. I'm an honest critic. But what has Peter Quillen done? Does he have a much deeper, much more impressive resume than Marco Antonio Rubio? So let's take a look at it. Peter Quillen, he beat Winky Wright, and Winky Wright was out of a three-year hiatus slash retirement, and then he came back, fought Peter Quillen, he beat him. Peter Quillen beat Fernando Guerrero. He looked uh, pretty good in that. But then you look at Marco Antonio Rubio, Marco Antonio Rubio beat David Lemieux, who is... And uh, he was undefeated at the time, and he's a big puncher. And we just seen David Lemieux recently run through Fernando Guerrero worse than um, Peter Quillen Kid Chocolate did. So Marco Antonio Rubio has that fight. He also fought Chavez Jr. I believe Carlos Baldemir. Um, Peter Quillen just fought Lucas Konecki, a fucking bum that nobody wanted to see that fight, and he went the distance with that bum. Before that. He had a fight with Gabe Rosado, if I'm not mistaken. And when the tide was seeming to change in Rosado's favor, the fight was stopped due to a, a cut. So who knows how that fight would have played out. So realistically, people are, are mad at this fight. Some people, and they're like, oh, it's a, a shit fight. But does Peter Quillen even have that much of a, a better resume than Marco Antonio Rubio? I mean, those are probably Peter Quillen's most recent performances. Can you honestly say it's shitting on a Rubio? It's not like he has, it's not like Peter Quillen has a Miguel Cotto resume, you know what I mean, where he's just fought fucking everybody or Shane Mosley or something. So I really don't see why some people are up in arms. It's a good fight. He can crack. And it's it's going to be Triple G against someone who potentially might not back down unless you physically make them back down. Macklin fought scared. Curtis Stevens didn't let his hands go. We know some of these tough, tough Mexican fighters that's not their MO, you know what I mean, you're going to have to literally break them the fuck down, so I think we can still get answers from this fight, see where Triple G's chin really is against someone who doesn't just fear his power, who may keep coming forward and may be tough, you know what I mean, and it could be a battle of attrition, again, I would pick Triple G to win this fight, but it's no walk in the park, or it doesn't have to be, unless Triple G is that good, you know what I mean, it's a, it's a good solid fight, um, and I think it's one of the best fights available so you could say oh david lemieux why doesn't he get the shot and that's a good fight too i would like to see david lemieux and triple g as well however he's fighting the guy that stopped david lemieux in marco antonio rubio so and he's the mandatory so how does this make sense but or not make sense but david lemieux makes sense you know what i'm saying so all around i think it's a solid fight stub hub has given us great fights this could be a fire fight this could be a fight of the year as long as it lasts i really believe that and again, um, it's going to be a little bit of variance to what we've seen recently. Like I said, Daniel Gill, Macklin, them dudes fought scared. Plus, Gill didn't have the power, in my opinion, that uh, Rubio has. Plus, Rubio might be more confident with the new trainer, Robert Garcia. So it's going to be an interesting fight. I really want to see it. Um, let me know what you guys think about this particular matchup. I just I don't see really many other options. I personally told you guys before. I see Triple G as being the best at 160. He hasn't proved it. He hasn't necessarily proven it, but I think in due time, I, I don't see Cotto beating him. I think Cotto's just overall too small. Cotto's a better boxer, but I think he's too small, and I think he would break Cotto down. Cotto also has a tendency to swell up, and his, his facial features get uh, real swollen. So that's not a good look against a vicious puncher like a Triple G. So, and and, and to be honest... Cotto versus uh, Triple G, it looks like out of the two fights, from what I'm hearing, I don't know, nothing set in stone with Cotto, they're talking about making Cotto versus Andy Lee. So to me, Triple G is taking on a tougher test than Cotto, even though Cotto has a deep resume, I'm not taking that away from him, but Andy Lee versus Marco Antonio Rubio, Marco Antonio Rubio is the fucking tougher fight, you know what I mean? That's how I see it. As far as Canelo, he, we don't know, he might fight Kirkland. He doesn't. He said he doesn't want to move up to 160 right away. So, again, this is a good fight given the circumstances and the the level of talent that are that are available. You know what I mean? 
I don't know who else. Some of you guys want Triple G to fight in his respective division. And not everyone's just going to move up. He said he wants to do work here. You can't get mad because the man wants to clean out a division. You know what I mean? And it's not why, like his division is just the weakest. It's not like cruiserweight or some shit. So it is what it is. I think it's a good fight personally. And I'm I'm definitely okay with this fight. I think we can get both um, parties can answer some questions. Maybe maybe even if um, Marco Antonio Rubio loses, maybe we'll see a guy uh, break his KO streak and go the distance. He went the distance with Chavez Jr. And Chavez Jr. is big as fuck. I don't know who hits harder, but I know Chavez Jr. had a supreme, especially back then, supreme weight advantage over Rubio on fight night because he was just outweighing. He wasn't really caring for his weight or anything like that. So it's a good fight. And then lastly, like I said before, you got to give Triple G fucking credit for fighting as many times as he's fighting per year. And if you disagree with Triple G versus Rubio, please let me know what realistic fight you want to see that the people um, involved could actually fight. Like, Cotto hasn't really expressed an interest in fighting Triple G. Freddie Roach was saying some shit about, yeah, we'll fight Triple G at a catch weight of 153 pounds or something, something crazy. So... Let me know what realistic, if you hate this fight, let me know what fight you would rather have seen that's realistic. Make sure you like the video. Let me know what you guys think. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off. Hey.